Hey Danny, thanks for reaching out. Looks like there's a hey few John, things that we're going to have to correct out. here, but I don't think it's going to be too big of an issue. James, thank you for reaching out and for sending me your soil report. We should be hey able JC, to get these things corrected pretty easily. Thank you easily. so much for your soil sample. Hey Nick, hope all's well. I've got your soil sample here. Hey Sam, hey Maria. I think it's just important to note hey Jeff, that you should wait to do your soil Ilky. test I think that we can until do about 45 here. to 60 Sadly. days after you've Looks had like you've got fertilizer. a lot of work cut out for you. It's pretty remarkable the outpouring that's come on the offering for the soil testing that I've been doing. I have to say it's sometimes been a little bit challenging because we've had to work through email issues and formatting issues and like that. I have had times where I've gotten far behind, but it seems as though everything's getting caught up. People are pretty happy with the way it's all going. So, I think this is a time where Everyone needs to understand exactly how this is working and why it might be important to have some guidance on your soil reports. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody, and welcome back. I wanted to just sort of run through a few things today and talk about the soil testing, soil test, uh, materials, recommendations, all of the stuff that's going on inside of this uh, sort of soil test consultation thing that I've been doing on uh, shop.loncology.com. It's a place where you can upload your soil reports and I go through and, and do a complete recommendation based on the information that you supply me. Now there's quite a bit that goes into that. I tend to have a few more questions uh, as far as when fertilizer was last applied, what's been used, what's the history, what do you have in stock, all of that kind of stuff to make determinations on what's going to be the best route for you to get your desired result. So there's been some pretty cool things that have come from this because it, the amount of dedication that you all have to uh, your lawns and your lawn journey and learning all of this stuff and really taking the time to dig in deep is pretty freaking fantastic. So I just wanna say, great job, keep it up. Thank you and all of all of that. I mean, there, there's so, so much uh, information sharing going back and forth that I think that, you know, you, you really should feel good about that. I'm pretty much taking any soil report that you have. So it could be Yard Mastery, Soil Savvy uh, from various different universities, Spectrum Ward. I'm, I'm getting them from kind of all over the place. And um, sort of the fun part for me, as far as someone who looks at these and looks at the numbers and sends recommendations back, is as every soil report is different as far as how they report things, how they uh, journal things, how they catalog things, who's doing CEC, who's not, who's making baseline recs, who's not. All, there's all of these different things that go into it. And so there's a couple of different things that I'd just like to point out in the differences in some of these tests and some of the recommendations that I've seen on soil reports that are uh, not quite accurate, I guess is a good way to put it. So there's a number of soil reports or companies out there that are doing uh, resin testing. So it's sort of an interface to show what nutrients are available to a root. It kind of absorbs and gives a good picture of what the plant could uptake in that moment. Uh, then there's other tests that are a little bit more broad spectrum that are going to show CECs, they're going to show loads in the soil that maybe aren't going to be able to get uh, taken by the plant in that time or just differences, right? But the biggest and most important thing is this, when soil reports are submitted for, let's say long-term planning, okay, for long-term planning, it's best to be starting with a blank slate, meaning 45 to 60 days since your last feeding of any kind. 45 to 60 days since your last feeding of any kind. Now, there are corrective tests that can be done where let's say you're having issues in the lawn and you have been feeding, you have been feeding, and maybe that shows up on your macros. So we can typically see your phosphorus, maybe some of the nitrate, potassium that's been applied in a short period of time. But then there's other elements that maybe you haven't been applying that will show low and those things can be corrected. So if you're having a lawn issue, it's not ever a bad time to take a soil test. That way you're not just throwing things willy nilly at it and hoping for the best. 
So I think it's really important for me to detail out what I'm actually doing when I'm doing these soil reports for people and, and reading through them and sending back recommendations. So I just sort of want to run through it because if you've gone through and you've looked at any of my old videos of soil reports, uh, what's in soil, the babe principle, all that kind of stuff, I work through those same uh, lines when I do these soil reports. So first and foremost, I'm always talking about pH. Now, there's been quite a few of you who subscribe to the channel who've sent me uh, soil reports. You've seen me make uh, pH corrective recommendations, whether that's lime or sulfur, and that's always split over different things. Now, for some of you who are taking those, uh, those resin tests, <sighs> We can't really get the best lime recommendation off of that because I, I don't see what your CECs are. So for some of you, I've actually had to pull the location of where you are and get soil data so that I can make lime recommendations just based on what your sort of generic CECs are. And it's not really particularly great that way. If you are going to do sort of a long-term soil testing, there are labs that you can send things to, and you've seen me mention Spectrum, you've seen me mention Ward, and there are others out there as well. But those sort of help in the sort of long-term planning, okay? Uh, there are, again, so many soil tests that will give you uh, just a, a nice little snapshot of where you are, and, and we can make some suggestions based on that. But then if we need to get into deeper, like these pH corrections, it helps to know really what sort of soil we're dealing with. So that's always the first thing, is going through and making sure that I'm recommending the right kind of lime, whether that's dolomitic or calcitic, or if I'm recommending sulfur for, for pH lowering, and in some cases even gypsum, that's been uh, on for a few of you. Next thing I'm typically running down through is phosphorus. Now I've seen phosphorus all over the map, but for the most part, the people who have sent me their soil reports right now, I've seen more actually high phos than low foss in most of the soil system. So, you know, a lot of that can do with history. It can also do with the area of the country you're in. There are all sorts of factors that go into that, but it needs to be taken into account so that you're not applying too much of that nutrient and maybe locking up other things down the road. So I, I wanna make sure that I do have somewhat of a history of what's being applied and then make good suggestions as far as your phosphorus is concerned so that we're getting the right thing out at the right time, right place, all of that good stuff. The next thing I want to talk about is potassium. That's usually, this is the order that I go down through these tests. Potassium, pretty much 99% of you have been super low on K. And I don't mean like a little bit. I mean like significantly low. So a lot of the time I'm making recommendations for like a sulfate of potash. And um, some of you, not so much. I, there, there have been others. I have recommended MOP to some people, but I tend to try to stay with the sulfate of potash recommendation. Now that's been hard for some people to find locally. And uh, I know Alan is actually bringing a sulfate of potash uh, 0048 into Yard Mastery very soon. So that's gonna be nice to be able to pick that up because I think it's been like 99% of you have had severely low K as part of your soil. So potassium is always the next thing that goes in. So I'm, I try to make recommendations based on what we can do in a combo FERT or what we can do on single applications or what needs to happen over four, five, six applications or even moving into the end of the next year. So once we go through that, we're kind of looking at like micronutrients. And micronutrients usually have pretty quick adjustments. There's not really a whole lot there, but there, there are things that I will send people to look for, whether it's at a turf supply store or if it's something they can get online. Uh, there, there are always different recommendations for each of you. But one thing that's been really curious this year, um, I would say probably about 30% of the people out there that I've have had tests come through, there's been some equal balance deficiencies between phosphorus and potassium that we've been able to solve with like triple balance fertilizers. Um, it, it just basic mixes like a triple 15 or a triple 20, something that's available locally. So sometimes we get into just putting out standard granular applications like that to fix major deficiencies where you could have something like 100, 120 pounds low on potassium, maybe you're 40 pounds low on phosphorus, you know, there, there's all these different things, but I'll take a calculation and give you a mix of fertilizer that you could actually put down and actually help you find it. I've had a few people that I've sent to some site ones around. I've sent people to uh, advanced turf solutions. Um, there's things that people have been able to pick up at Home Depot. There's things that people are ordering on Yard Mastery. There's things that it's kind of all over the place. So that's, that's kind of an interesting part of this is I wanna make sure that you have the simplest roadmap to get the products down in order to get the balance the fastest. So there's typically a few things that go on and let's talk about nitrogen for a second as well. Now on most of the universities, this is really fascinating for me and I'm happy to see this. Most of the university um, soil reports that I've gotten 
they are showing recommendations for nitrogen based on different levels of turf care is the best way to put that. So there's sort of a home lawns recommendation and there's like a professional turf recommendation or a low performance, high performance, however you want to look at it. And uh, they're finally taking into account that uh, for people who are taking care of their home lawns, they don't need to load in like everybody's been saying for so long. So generally, and people who've gotten the emails from me, I'm not recommending more than two and a half pounds of in annually. And I don't really give a crap what turf type that is for the high side. If it's on a home lawn, it's not getting the abuse that you're getting from a golf course that's getting traction on it every day or a sports field that's getting traction every day. Centipede lawns are gonna be less than that, but for the most part, that's gonna be my high end and I'm recommending on how to split that out through the course of the season. That's warm season or cool season. It doesn't really make a difference. There's a level and I'm seeing that more and more on these university uh, reports where they're only saying about two pounds of in for home lawns annually. So it's good to see everybody coming around and uh, starting to realize that we can grow very healthy turf, extremely healthy turf on lower nitrogen inputs, which is something I've been standing on since the very beginning. So my goal in all of this is to try to limit overuse. That's, that's really the goal here is to sort of teach a little bit more of a responsibility model rather than, um, just flinging and jinging. You know, I, I don't really want to see that happen because you do have more issues down the road. And there's quite a few of you who, maybe I did soil test readings in the past, a year ago, maybe even two years ago, that have followed along with that and you're sending me pictures and your lawns are just absolutely gorgeous because you've kind of, you have a plan and you're executing the plan and the plan is working. So that's more the reason behind this. I, I think that, and, and I, if you look at my articles or you've seen some of my old videos, I used to get really pissed about soil tests, like quite a bit, because I would see these sort of no real information tests that give you no real rhyme or reason for the recommendations that are made. And in fact, I've seen a few tests that have come through where somebody has maybe been low on potassium, for instance. They're low on potassium and there's a recommendation on there that says apply 0060 at 12 and a half pounds per thousand. And that makes me want to lose my mind because no, like no, there is so much in, uh, so much potassium going out at that point. I mean, you're going to dry everything out. You're pretty much going to fry your grass, but that's a recommendation that's coming through on a soil report. And that's not okay. There's, there could be that amount needed total, likely not. That would be insane, but we need to break that up over certain applications. So that's the other piece that you're going to get as I'm outlining how many applications of which particular nutrient, how many times, how to back into your nitrogen rate and all of that kind of good stuff. So some of these email exchanges go back and forth eight or 10 times until everybody's clear. So there, there is a bit that goes back and forth, but you know, I, this is something that's really, it's fun for me and it's great to see how everybody is um, taking the information and executing and getting the ultimate result out of it. So. That was really it. I just wanted to talk a little bit about that, what this offering was really about, because I haven't had a chance to dig into what the process really looks like. And I just wanted to get that out and share that with everybody. So you can find it on shop.loncology.com. I'll put a link in the description below so you can get on there and click to that and uh, submit the info. And then we're just rocking and rolling. So that's really it. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this sunny day and I will talk to you guys real soon. See ya.